Hello, saints. Peace, love, grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope everybody's doing absolutely fantastic today. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, we're moving along nicely in our study on the book of Acts. And in my opinion, the book of Acts is the most important book in the New Testament because it reveals the transition from one dispensation to another, from law to kingdom to grace, from grace to kingdom to law, from Peter to Paul, the very foundation to what right division is all about. When you understand the book of Acts, the puzzle suddenly comes together. The light bulb comes on and the phrase right division and administrations and dispensations suddenly they have two true definition a quick review of what we've been studying so far in Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2 in uh, chapter 1 Luke is writing to Theophilus Matthias is chosen to replace Judas and the Apostles are told to stay in Jerusalem to wait for power from on high the Holy Spirit chapter 2 we see thousands of Jews coming from many nations to take part in the Feast of Pentecost, which is 50 days after Passover. Now, while thousands of Jews are in Jerusalem, they witness the power of the Holy Spirit by seeing and hearing the apostles speak in many different languages. The gift of tongues to undo the curse of confused languages that happened at the Tower of Babel. Over 3,000 Jews are added to the little flock, all believing in the Apostles' doctrine. Acts chapter 2 verse 42 of the Kingdom Gospel. Repent, be baptized, and endure to the end. We also saw eight works that the last day's believers, the little flock of believing Jews, are going to have to continue performing to be saved at the Second Coming. Now, one thing I want to stress at this point is we need to examine the mindset of these believers at this point, at this point in time. What are they thinking? All these believers think that they're in the last days. And we saw that when Peter quotes from Joel 2. They have no idea that God is about to reveal 2,000 years of grace at this point. The mystery gospel of grace is still a hidden secret. There is no body of Christ yet. Paul hasn't been converted. We're looking at the Apostles doctrine here, the kingdom gospel. So as far as these Jews are concerned, they're about to enter into the day of the Lord, Daniel's 70th week. They're preparing to see their Messiah Jesus return with the angels. And it's important for them to continue in the faith. To perform certain works to prove their faith to have the oil or the fruit that they truly believe we see that in the parable of the virgins here we see these virgins a picture of it some of these Jews will continue in good works having proof or oil of their faith at the second coming and the fake believers won't have the works they won't have the fruit the oil to prove their faith at the second coming and we'll we'll get more into the applications of several other parables as we move along in our studies now chapter 3 in the book of Acts verse 1 now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour the ninth hour is 3 p.m. in the afternoon Peter and John are two of the 12 apostles keep that in mind so far, we've seen only the apostles performing these miracles. So far. And we've seen in earlier studies that there was a set of qualifications in order to be considered an apostle. You had to be with Jesus during his earthly ministry and you had to witness his glorified state, his resurrection. In verse 2, And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, 
who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. Now giving alms was a good work under the law. Helping the poor, providing for the needy was very common in the Mosaic system of laws. In verse 4, And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankles, his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. This is Solomon's porch, okay? So let's, let's pause for a moment. Notice something interesting. Did Peter and John tell this man the gospel that we hear today? Did they tell the man that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again? Did Peter or John even explain this to the man, what Jesus did for him? The reason why Peter and John don't get into our gospel for today is because it didn't exist yet. They're still in the apostles' doctrine to believe that Jesus was the Messiah prophesied in the scriptures. It's this faith that counts here in this dispensation. The only thing the beggar had to believe is in the name of Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ and who he was. And he was healed instantly. Can you see the difference between the gospels, between the kingdom and grace at this point? Now, between what Peter and the eleven preached, okay, and what Paul will preach later on, when he's shown the secret by Jesus, there's a humongous difference. In Peter and the eleven apostles, uh, the apostles' doctrine, we see faith in Jesus. In Paul's gospel, the gospel of grace, we see faith on Jesus. There's a difference. So continuing on, Peter now explains why this man was healed. It was to be a witness of where this power was coming from. In verse 12, And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Notice in the next verse, it's not believing and trusting on Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that healed this man, but it's the faith in Jesus, believing in Jesus, who he is, the Son of our one and true living God. Verse 16, And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things 
which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Then the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Notice in verse 19, it doesn't say will be blotted out, but it says it may be blotted out. That's conditional. And it's conditional upon if they endure to the end of Daniel's week. Now, how do we know that? Paul tells us, Peter tells us, the times of refreshing, this happens at the second coming of Jesus. When the Jews will be saved from the tribulation, Jacob's trouble, and they'll be divided up from the wise and the foolish, the goat and the sheep. Verse 20, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. In the next verse, Peter tells them again when their sins will be blotted out. Peter calls the times of refreshing something else here in verse 21. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So Israel's sins are in remission. They're in remission at this point. It is a temporary thing. It's in remission until Jesus comes back to save them. Times of refreshing and times of restitution is at the end of Daniel's 70th week, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now keep in mind, the 2,000 year period of grace, the dispensation of grace, is still hidden at this point. The pivot point will be based on the decision they make when the Holy Spirit speaks through the prophet Stephen in the near future. And Peter reminds them here that Moses spoke about this prophet Stephen a long time ago. He's warning them here that they need to make a right decision concerning Stephen or something very bad is about to happen. Verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, unto you, Israel, the Jews, of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you, the Jews, the twelve tribes. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet, Stephen, shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Verse 25, Ye, twelve tribes, Israel, the seed of Jacob, are the children of the prophets, and the covenant which God made with our fathers saying unto Abraham, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you, the twelve tribes, Israel, the seed of Jacob, the Jews, unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So Peter reminds them what Moses said concerning a future prophet that would come to the Jews. Also, Peter reminds them who Jesus came for, the sheep of the house of Israel first. He came for Israel first. So everything at this point hinges on what the Jews are going to do with this coming prophet. This is the pivot point, if you will. We're still within the first year after Jesus ascends into heaven. He sends the apostles, the Holy Spirit. Peter is preaching the apostles' doctrine, the kingdom gospel, to believe in Jesus as their prophesied Messiah, to endure unto the end, to continue in the faith and wait for the second coming. That's what they're all thinking in their, in their heads at this point. 
the creation of the body of Christ is still future. Peter and the other apostles are not preaching the gospel that we have today. They're preaching the kingdom gospel, preparing the way for the ushering in of the earthly kingdom. That's also called the kingdom of heaven that Jesus brings with him at the second coming. So that's our review in the study on Acts chapter 3. And we'll get into Acts chapter 4 next. Getting closer to the stoning of Stephen and the conversion of Saul. The revelation of the mystery hid within God the Father since before the foundation of the world. The creation of our gospel today. The gospel of grace that lasts over 2,000 years. It's all about grace. Thanks for studying with me. Peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. Lord willing, I'll see you on the next video if the rapture does not happen tonight. Thank you.